Uh, we're talking football today, as well as music and other things, with the amazing Jonathan Casillas of the New York Giants. There you yeah. go. Yeah. That's right. Fresh off a win. Good morning. <laughs> Laura Styles and Roseburg. How'd that win feel? Fantastic. Fantastic. Nothing like a win, man. Of course. Everything feels But bad. that win, though, after a couple of weeks of not so not so nice things. Yeah, it would have been, been a tough situation coming here two and four, you know, talking to you guys. Yeah, especially after the... All right, man. The negative started when the Redskins got that big win. You remember at MetLife that day. When... That was when the losing streak started. That you is when it that? started. Yeah, when yeah, Sue yeah. Cravens took that interception. Wait, you were on the sideline that day, right, Rose? Yes, you went I, down I, on the field and, and I think jinxed I, the entire MetLife that day. I think I saw this guy, too. I always okay, so wonder look. I always wonder how you guys feel when you see Rosenberg. And you know he, we're good friends with Victor Cruz. So you mm -hmm. see him giving him a pound and everything. And he's in full Redskins gear. Wait, you touched you touch Victor Cruz Let, that day before the game? He played well. So. Yeah, you see, you he put see. The bad mama, <laughs> mama, All right, so wait, you were gonna, you, were, you, you had a version of the events that you were gonna do. So, say. so I met this dude a, a while ago. This is Nike event we did. Um, I don't know, six years, five years ago. I don't know, four yeah, years. Yeah, the ago. intro that uh, start of the season at the. It's good. Store. So we was talking ball. You know, I'm like, dang, like Rosenberg, man. I, you know, I've, I've known him for a long time, personally. You know, not really, but you know, everybody knows Rosenberg. Thank you. So I see him hey, at the man. game, hey. and I look, and I'm like, he has a Washington Redskins jersey on. Facts. The <laughs> New York personality, New York game, you have a Redskins jersey on, I'm no. pissed. I don't know the history. I don't know anything. And I'm like, Vic, Vic, what's going on, Vic? Well, why does Rosenberg have a Washington jersey? He's like, oh, he's from Washington. And I was like, all right, okay, that's that's kind of cool. But I'm like, what the hell, bro? He's from, <laughs> like, he's New York. He's New York man. now. He's I New know. York, bro. I know, I know, mm -hmm. and I know, and I know, I know, I know. And I feel a way about it. <laughs> I, I do feel bad in some sense, right? But the part part of for so many New Yorkers, part of being a New Yorker is originally being from someplace else. That's like part of the DNA of this city, right? Sometimes, not always, but a lot. In that's our case, out of yeah. I just said that's sometimes. What out of, that's an out of town or something. But the, out, but I'm an out of, and I, that's a new New York thing too. What do you mean? Like, there's a lot of New Yorkers that are new New Yorkers that are from somewhere else. But there's a lot of people who are generationally. New York, New, New York. Jersey, mm -hmm. Tri-State. Well, yeah. that's the thing that's sort of interesting for me, right, is that my family is New York also. Okay. So I do have a lot of roots here, came here my entire life, but I was always visiting my entire life. And so while New York is the place I plan on being forever, I can't trade teams. I was stuck with that team. You know how easy True it would fan. be to be a Giants fan? I'm friends with Giants. Y'all are win the Super Bowl every five years, it feels like. <laughs> you know, I love the way the organization is run. The Giants organization, I just think top to bottom is... One yeah. of the best organizations in the NFL, you'd agree. I mean, I've been on some teams. I've, I've been in the Patriots. I've right. been in New Orleans. I've been in Tampa. Great A organization, you know, from from the top to bottom. When were you... So what? give us the years. What was, What's your order of teams that you've been on in the league? So my rookie year was 2009. I was with New Orleans. I won my first Super Bowl there. I was there four years. Oh, so you and already got a ring. Nice. I had two rings. Two. Oh, wait. What's Yo, the second one? He says just the Giants. Now. Just wait. He no, says not, the not the Giants. Not the Patriots. Giants. Sorry, Patriots. There you go. He says that based on fact. <laughs> All right, continue, continue. And I got to make sure I get it in there. So, you know 09 saying? Saints, yeah, Super Bowl. Thank you. 12. And then I was in uh, Tampa for two years. I got traded my second year to New England. I was literally the worst team in the league. One win. Halfway through the season, I went to New England. Mid-year. Mid-year. <sighs> went to the best team in the league. My first game was against Denver Broncos, Peyton Manning, snow game. I was playing at 85 degrees, 32 degrees, snowing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's that like? Take, the, take us through that, though, for real. When you're, you're on Tampa Bay and nothing in particular is going on. Oh, man. And then you turn around and you're going to, uh, you're in the middle of a Manning, Brady, Patriots, yeah. Broncos, the most watched yeah. thing going on. What's that transition like? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's literally like you, like you literally just drop your life and pick up a new life. Like, literally. I mean, it's still football. But like everything's new, everything's different. You don't know anybody. And how do you learn? How do you learn plays that quickly? How are you able to get in and do a job? So I got traded on a Tuesday. Bill Belichick said, "There's an eight o'clock flight tonight. It's five o'clock from in Tampa Bay." He's like, "There's an eight o'clock flight tonight. I need you there. I need you on that flight." I'm like, well, "I got my dog. I got. I, gotta, I, I think I, that I got stuff I got to do before I leave." Not give a life. damn. I like this guy. Belichick you know, doesn't but, give a damn. No, get on that flight. No. Get he on said, that flight. No, 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 no. You're playing Sunday, so I need you here tomorrow morning. First thing, first thing tomorrow morning. No, like ten o'clock. No, I need you here six thirty in the morning. All right, so I made it happen, you know. And uh, like I was there six thirty in the morning, game plan in. I thought I was gonna play defense that week, but I didn't. I played all special teams, but I had four tackles on special teams. So they was like, okay, we got, we got, we got somebody. Yeah, you know, we, I think we, we got a good guy in the middle of the season, and, and it was, it was a good look, man. And at first, I, I was hesitant. 
All the linebackers in New England over history, they don't look like me. I'm 6'2", 225. Them dudes are 240, 255, 265. High tower plays at like 270. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, ah, I'm a little hesitant about it. My agent was like, bro, are you, are you serious? Bill Belichick wants you in the middle of the season. Get your ass over there, bro. Yeah, and go play. Go in yeah, the Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what that's happened. What did. So. Um, yeah, you just said something interesting, too, because the league has changed a little bit over the last few years where linebackers like yourself, even playing in a down position, has become more common since the Clay Matthews and some of these other players who are the smaller, not the quintessential body type right. of the linebacker. Right, right. Um, did that make you more valuable as a player? Is that why this is happening and, and kind of your hesitance there? Well, you, you know, um, I've always been a good special teams player, you know, and um, as time has been evolved, since I've been in the league, it's, it's evolved to a passing league, you know, from everything from the kickoffs to how they protect the quarterback to how they protect the receivers. And I think the people like me, people that can run, people that can cover and bang tight ends and, and play it in run game, I think we're becoming more of a valuable asset. That's why you have like a Mark Barron that plays mm -hmm. in L.A. Mark Barron was a safety all his career. All of a sudden he get Actually, he got paid at linebacker, you know, and he played safety all his career. But people like that, like myself, like the tweener guys, mm. I think those are guys that are becoming more, a lot more available in the, the tight end position that's taken off in the last seven years. Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham. I mean, Vernon Davis, when, you know, when he was a little, like, you know, th those guys. I mean, he scored a touchdown very, yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Very valuable. <laughs> I should have known. Like, you know the tight end. Jordan you know, Reed's good, though. Jordan I got a lot of respect for that. Well, I, I, a lot of respect I, for him. I'm starting to freak out a little bit because he just had his sixth concussion. And sixth? Yeah. I didn't know. I did not know that. Yeah, he just had his sixth. He, that's, you know yeah, what? That's, some, that's scary, man. How many have you had? You know what? I, I don't really know, to tell you the truth. That's but not scary, a, too. Not, not enough, though, that it was something that happened right No, no. Well, let me ask you first. Do you think you've had some? Yeah, of course. I know I've had some. Yeah, I don't know how many I've actually reported or actually that I, I admitted that I had, but I might have had one and kept on playing. You mm. might not have known. Right. You know, and, and that's the scary thing about it. It was a guy, um, his last name was Cotrera. I might be saying it wrong, but it was Cotrera. It might be Italian. And um, I got to Tampa. He was in Tampa. He wore a black visor. And I'm like, dang, how you get the black visor? It was like he got bad concussions. Everybody said that. So I'm like, dang, like that's not cool when everybody knows. So he had the visor to protect his eyes from yes. light. Yes. That is crazy. And he had a he had a concussion that year, and it was a bad one. Like the one you like, you know, you see the hit, you like ah, you know, you you kind of you kind of wince at it. And then he had a birth of his kid like three days later. So I called him like, bro, like I seen him. Then I'm like, yo, did you were you coherent for your child's birth? You know, I wanted to know that because. I had I, everybody got kids in here. That's one of the most amazing yeah. things you could ever go through. And I'm like, I was concerned. Like, did he miss that? As in, was he coherent? Was he there? You know, some some people they get a they get a concussion. They can come back two three days later. They're fine. They can they can re, uh, regurgitate the test. And the test is pretty. It's a strong test. Like you, you know? got to be mentally you got to be there. You know, like um. So some people. They're done. They're done after a couple or six, whatever. You know, they're done, and the light affects them. The sound affects them. Like the noise, they can't be around. They can't concentrate. They can't focus. Mm. That's some scary stuff. You got a guy that you deal with every day. You joking around with him. All of a sudden, he's a different person. I know. That's what I'm. I'm and I think <clears throat> you know, Jordan. He's been very protective of himself. Always coming back. That's why when he'd have one, sometimes he'd be out for a month. Like he doesn't rush back. But I am freaked out because. I used to say this and people would kind of laugh at me and now I think people um, agree. The, he has literally Hall of Fame ability. Like oh, yeah. he is someone He's who good. could be an all-time tight end, He's good. but he can't, it, it's just his body and I, I, it, it does concern and would, me. And would you say in your experience, eight years in the league, you're yeah. from, and from Jersey City, right? Mm -hmm. um, in your experience at the level where you are, you made it sound like, look, if you're playing, like I, I didn't know that it was just, you're a linebacker, you're going to have some concussions. Like, I didn't think of it like that. I always thought of it like some people get them, some people don't. Right. Um, would you say that? Everybody gets at least a, a one yeah. or two, right? Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't say is, everybody, but yeah. But it's a part of the game. Yeah. At every position. Yeah. Um, would, would you say that, I mean, I'm sure you're in love with how the NFL is stepping up towards handling this and not, you know, kind of, because in the past it feels like it was swept under the rug a little bit. Yeah. It was kind of tried to cover, but it feels like they've been forced to, yeah, everything's being brought to light now, you know, especially social media taking off, you know, the last 10 years or whatever. Um, but I think the league is doing everything they can to to help guys, you know, people like uh, 
I got the CTE stuff that's going yeah. on, and that's that's some scary stuff, man. Like, uh, like I, I get a little nervous thinking about that because I play ball and I and I'm in there, you know, I'm in there hitting. And you with can't my hesitate. Head, you know what I mean? You can't hesitate. You can't. You know, you that's start playing you differently. You start, yeah, you start getting like actually really hurt, neck, back, whatever, your, your knees, and and you start missing tackles. You know what I mean? And you're not the same player anymore. And like. It's it's something I don't like to think about, you know what I mean? Because I'm in there every day. Like, I'm in there banging. How do you... I've heard this from some players and, and seen stories of knowing when to quit, when my career's over. Right. Right? Um, for you, and you can't... Every, everybody's different, but um, knowing what you're putting your body through, knowing what the job requires, how do you know when you've had enough? I, I'm not sure, really. You know, I'm, I'm looking to get to 10. You know, I've had some serious injuries in my career. My mm -hmm. second year, I missed the entire year after winning the starting job after the Super Bowl. Uh, we had a Liz Frank injury in my foot. And I didn't know if I'd ever be the same player again. You know, that it was just that serious of an injury. And, you know, I'm at the point now, it's like if I do get something pretty significant at this age in my career, I'll probably retire, you know, and I'm pretty comfortable in saying that. And if you had to, you'd, you'd be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, that has to be one of the hardest things. Imagine admitting, like, okay, this is it. My body can't take it. But meanwhile, you haven't reached the goals that you want in your career. Right, That right. has to be... I, but, I could imagine how many players sweep it under the rug and just right, decide to keep their right. mouth shut. And, and, you know, some people some people do it just for the money. You know what I mean? And it's it's tough sometimes. Some people do it to chase that ring. I got two, I got two you rings You got rings. Already. You made yeah. some money. Yeah. You got you know your children. I mean? You I got, got a good daughter. life. Yeah. You know, I got a daughter. I, and I got a lot of people I take care of, you know, and I don't want to be the person that needs to get taken care of. Uh, I guess the next thing we got to talk to you about, Jonathan, is, um, you know, you guys really rallied around Odell the last few weeks of him getting, you know, obviously a lot of pressure from the media, the kicking net, lashing out at him. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot yeah, going yeah, on beef, there. Yeah, he had beef with the net. There was a lot going on. <laughs> but talk about, you know, Rallying around him and lifting him up just as a teammate, which you guys did as as a as a unit. I feel like it's our responsibility. You know, he's young. He got a lot on him. Imagine being his age. I mean, the dude went from being a regular guy, receiver, you know, in the league. He had the one-handed catch, and all of a sudden, he's the most popular person in sports, possibly. You know, and it went from, you know, it's like night and day. And it's a lot. You know, every time I look at my Explore page, it's him. Every third picture is him. Every third video is him on my explore page. Dancing. Doing Dancing whatever. at home with his brother. At yeah, Drake's doing crib. Whatever. Whatever, though. On the street. Now he's rhyming. In, I saw him in rhyming in the Dunkin' Donuts hat. Yeah. He's yeah. got a lot going on. That's pretty bad. Oh. But, 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 <laughs> but, you know, the kid's a tremendous player. Tremendous athlete. I, I truly believe if he do any sport besides ball, he'll be a, a professional at it. Yeah, he's one Very of the Very successful. Like, he's that good an athlete. Oh, he's unbelievable. Now, can you tell him, in my humble opinion... It's, it's time to retire the net jokes. <laughs> I, I really thought last week was the perfect ending. And then he hugged it. the net. Right. I thought that it's was over. it, right? It's over. <laughs> I didn't even see it. He like proposed or yeah, something like too, that. Was, and I was like, all right, it's a little it's, too much. Let's, let's, let's put a bow on the net. <laughs> right, Have, now, on. Did, did anyone <clears throat> privately like pull him aside and try really just be like, yo, you're the you're the shit. You gotta learn how to, as Ebro said, you know, like I'm not act a, like you've been there. Act before. like you've been there before. Like yeah. even yesterday, I was it was a huge play to win the game. Right. But I still knew the second he started celebrating, y'all were getting a penalty. Right. And to be to if we're being totally blunt, the reason the Ravens got a chance to put the ball in the end zone at the end of the game was maybe because that 15 yard penalty. Yeah. Well, well, <sighs> I feel like um, early in the year, maybe even last year, it wasn't really anybody, and I say that. Kind of opinionate. I don't really know for a fact, but uh, I sit next to Victor uh, on on the plane, and we talk all the time. And I've known Victor for a really long time, Jersey guys. Oh, yeah, of course, so we we talk, and you know, we talk about some serious stuff, you know. And I, I talk to him. He said, I, you know, I'm trying to talk to him a little bit, you know, because Victor's handled it. You know, he had the, the rise of stardom fast as a young player, yep. winning the Super Bowl, young in his career, and a one celebrity going from an undrafted guy nobody knew about. So basically like an A1 celebrity in New York, you know, everybody knows he, Victor. Of course. And I think he handled it very well, you know, but Odell's an even bigger star than Victor, Victor was. ever was, yeah. which, is, which is unbelievable. Which is crazy because Victor's a huge crazy, star. You know, and, and, and you know, just me, myself being a captain, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I have a good relationship with Odell too. And I, I've said a couple of things to him just to let him know, like, look, we're on your side, bro. We got your back, you know, and after the, 
After the play happened, when he scored, he coming over to the defense, like, apologizing and stuff. I'm like, man, get out of here, man. Go over there. Get out of here, man. <laughs> he did come apologize because he put you guys in the same Oh, well, he knew that the 15 yards was going to yeah. put you guys oh, in the spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at first, you know, it looked like he was kind of, like, nonchalant. Like, I don't care about the penalty. But then he thought, like, dang, I'm kind of putting well, my team him, in a bad situation. And he ran up to coach, too. He went to McAdoo mm -hmm. also like, right away. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. But that's him, though. It's like... You know, he's a fiery guy. I don't want to ever take that flame from him. And that's the dangerous part. You don't mm -hmm. want him you gotta to lose that passion. You got to manage it, though. Yeah. You got you to gotta control the flame. It's not about getting... You don't want to put it out. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to be able to turn it up and down. What are we going to do about Coach McAdoo's style? Cause which one? The, he may, he may have one? the worst style in the NFL. He may be the worst dressed coach in, in all of sports. We be talking about him stops. Like what what are we gonna do? Cause I mean the mustache is straight out of like he dressed he like looks, a plumber. What does he look like? <laughs> he really no, you know what he looks like? You remember um Matt Dillon and there's something about Mary? Yeah. That's, what like. That's what he looks like. The mustache. It's, it's like, pretty bad, it's, bro. Does he does he know that he can't dress? I, can't Victor talk to him? He's a style know. icon. Yeah, right. <laughs> How do you like Mac do as a coach? I, I like him. I like him a lot. You know, I, I had TC for one year, and um, Tom Coughlin. I, I, yeah, sorry. Sorry. I, I've I grew to appreciate him. You know, in in a short time. I mean, I played for the Bill Parcells disciples. I played for those guys. I played for Bill Belichick. I played for uh, of course Tom Coughlin and Sean Payton. So similar styles. Everybody's different, but similar styles. Real aggressive. You know, they get after you, but they make you stay on top of your shit. You know, and that's Hold why you, you got to respect. You got to respect that from all those yeah. coaches. And Ben McAdoo follows suit too. Who's uh, of the legends you worked for, uh, 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 that you played for? Peyton, uh, Coughlin, and Belichick. We all know that when the history books are written, Belichick's at the top of that list. You know, he's it's it's him and Lombardi, the two yeah. the two greatest of all time. Right. W did he stand out like light years away from the other guys, or were they? Was it close? I know you don't want to diss anyone, but I don't think anyone would be hurt by knowing that Belichick, you know, everyone knows Belichick's an icon. Bill Belichick is everything that people say he is. I mean, I'm going to put this, this is perspective. Maybe you guys are a little unfamiliar with it, but the game's on Sunday. We get the game plan Tuesday night, Wednesday. Tuesday is usually the day off. I, I've never been a part of this before. Usually about Friday, Saturday, I got the game plan. I'm good to go. Ask me any question. I'm good. He wants you to know the playbook or whatever, the game plan every week by Wednesday. My first week there, he was quizzing people Wednesday morning. Mind you, my first day was Wednesday. I got there Tuesday. My first day was Wednesday. And you had the playbook on Tuesday night. He was asking people, not, not only like a linebacker asking the running backs and the tight ends that we're going against, but he's asking offensive coordinators, their schemes, their history, and you got to know the answers to it on Wednesday. You just got the the game plan the night before. I've never seen that before. What happens if you don't? He's gonna embarrass you in front of the whole team. It's it's and like, for the audience that doesn't know what a game plan looks like to even wrap their brain around the concept. How many pages is the game plan usually? It it, it depends. They they give you they're they're very fluid. They they give you everything. You know, it's pretty pretty fluid. Like everything, like the history of the team. They give you. They scout like six games. They scout a scout a game from last. Last year, they give you all the injury reports. They give you uh, transactions. They give you all the stats. They give you all the plays. They give you tendencies. It's huge. And, like, I don't really go through everything, but I try to at least skim through some stuff. But you, Bill Belichick, you better go through everything on Wednesday because he will ask you in front of the whole team. And if you don't know, you may not play that week. Like, he's that serious about it. it it's I've never seen that before. The first day, I was looking around like, oh, my God, he's asking some questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> the offense is going man. I'm like, oh, man. It was tough, man. He put a lot of pressure on you. But those guys, man, uh, up, up there, you know, people people could say what they want about him. You know what I mean? But his standard that he sets is very high. I think it's beyond anybody else's in the league. And, why, and, and but the thing that none of us on the outside understand is how he's a player's coach, <laughs> right? Because he seems like a dick if you're watching a right. you know an a press conference but players love him yeah what is it about him that actually makes him lovable as a guy to players because he's up front he's in your face he's not talking behind your back he's not telling you one thing and doing another thing you know if he's like look i, I brought you here to play this that's what you're gonna do you know if he's not gonna be like okay i'm gonna give you some looks at this position and you're not gonna get looks at positions like 
he's not going to blow smoke. You know, and, there is, and that can exist other places. Oh, yeah, You hear one does. thing from the head coach, your position coach tells you something else, another player says something else. Oh, yeah, definitely. He has one message that it's all his voice. Yeah, and, and I've said it before. I've, I have conversations all the time about Bill Belichick because everybody wants to know. Of course. What is he like? What is New England like? Da, da, da. I say, if you can tolerate him, you know, because he, he demands a certain, it's a certain level that he demands, you can't just be chilling there. Like, you, you got to go to work every day. You know, you can't just show up on Sunday and play ball. That ain't going to work. Tom not going to have that. Bill not going to have it. Gronk not going to have it. You know, Hightower not going to have it. That's just how it is over there. What, That's what, why they're so successful. And what, what's Brady like? He's cool, man. I mean, the first day I got there, I got there at 6.30 in the morning. He was there already. He saw me. I was the first person I saw. He's like, Casillas, it's good to have you. I was like, hey, man, I'm a patriot now, man. <laughs> yeah. I just saw Tom in the hallway, man. It's a good feeling. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but to have Tom Brady, one of the greatest of all time, know you when you right. show up. Actually, must know be who I was. You right. know what I mean? And coming in like, oh, dang. Like, that's kind of cool, you know? Talk about, I mean, you're the captain, um, one of the captains on the defense. How many captains on the defense are there? It's only one. It's you. Yeah, it's three captains. Me, 10. Eli Manning. Eli Manning. Is <laughs> and Zach right. Yossi, the special teams captain. And then, um, talk about where you guys are as a defense right now. Because <clears throat> people have questioned you guys. They've questioned um, either, either A, young people at certain skill positions um or are you guys just not being a unit for that long where where are you at with it as the captain of the defense and what are you working on to strengthen right now it's, it's all of those things you know injuries injuries has done a lot the last few weeks you know having certain people down eli apple's been doing a tremendous job as rookie, a rookie yeah you know and having and he's him beat down, up and drc was DRC's out he's beat up you know he's sitting there playing with a limp the whole game against green bay with a wrap on his leg i mean that's some tough stuff right there, you know, and we're just, we're still gelling together. You know, I feel like we have the right guys in the right places, and uh, Spags is doing a good job in putting us in the right situations. He's chills trying to figure us out, too. Right. Trying to figure out what we could do well, what not, you know, but with two things I know we have to do, we have to get to that quarterback, and we have to create turnover. Because if we continue to do that, and we're losing a turnover battle every week, we're not going to have a good record at the end of the season, and we're not going to like Carey. where we're sitting. That's Carey. for sure. And you got to figure it out before you uh, start dealing with uh, before you deal with Dallas again. Yeah, you know you guys got a, a big win over Dallas to start the year, but that wasn't really that's not even the full Dallas team that right. it is right now. Which is true. Prescott, did, what did you see from that first game? You know, you got your eyes right there on Prescott. What did you take away from seeing him play right out of the gate? His first game ever as an NFL professional, he was pretty composed as a as a rookie, and we were we were coming after him. You know, we were hitting him. We were we were downhill on all his running backs. Ezekiel Elliott didn't get nothing. Yeah, he didn't do anything against us. He didn't get us. anything against us. You know, and and after that, he's been killing. So he's been having that run game, and, and then that opens the doors up for him. Play action pass. He got a good arm. So he didn't even have that game one, and he still looked composed to you. He looked pretty good. You know, as a rookie, you got to think it's his first game ever. Big stage at, at Dallas. The Giants coming in town. You got JPP, Olivier Vernon chasing your ass down every play. Yep. You know, that's that's It was September right 11th. Uh, the right. President it's, Bush it's was out huge, there on the field. It was a huge, lot going game. on that day. Yeah, huge wow. game. You know, and I, I still felt like he was composed. And we had a conversation last, yesterday. We was watching Green Bay, and I'm like, man, they kicking their ass they really in Green did. Bay. They really did. They're a lot better than when they was when we played them. I, I was saying that yesterday, and, you know, we'll, we'll handle them when we, when we get to them. But Dallas is a really good team. Nice to have the NFC East be pretty good, though. I know. Right? I this is a good too. division. Right. Like, I'm sitting there looking like, all right, you know, this time last year, Halfway through the season, even three fourths through the season, we all had losing records. Right, <laughs> every single and team. And now, and now the Cowboys went to five and one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Redskins four and two. Mm -hmm. uh, Eagles dropped their three and first. two. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you guys three and three. Yep. Last place, place. five hundred. Right. Right. That's not bad. But you're still in a spot where you guys can make a run of it. Oh, for sure. For sure. We still got Dallas again. We got Eagles twice and Washington again. So. Yep. Yeah, I know. Jonathan Casillas, ladies and gentlemen, before we let you out of here, obviously, I know um, we have a personal relationship with Colin Kaepernick, right? So he um, is uh, uh, dating one of our coworkers, which I think is pretty much common knowledge out there. But um, so we're very supportive of him and what the conversation that he's created. Right. Um, a, do you have an opinion? And B, what has his protests created as far as a conversation in the NFL world amongst the players, amongst you guys, like? You know, your private convos, right? Like, because obviously yeah. the public combo, everybody deals with um, how they feel about what's going on in America differently, and that's what's great about our country. But how do you feel about it, and what's the conversation that's that's taking place? I like it. I, I like everything that he did. You know, at first it was like, what is he doing? You know, you don't know what he's doing, but then you see the reasons behind it. You see that he's been advocating for it in the past. And then you look, all right, 
I get it. You know, and then it just took legs and ran. You know, every, everybody got a hold of it and people can comments, good and bad, they're talking bad about him, but that's the thing. He wanted people to talk about it. That's exactly what's going on. And the Giants, we just had a meeting with Corey, uh, with Corey Booker the other day, mm. New, York, um, New Jersey mm-hmm. Senator, a former mayor of, of, of Newark. Yep. And uh, it was a great meeting, very, very informative. He came in, dropped a lot of knowledge on us, you know, just giving us statistics about um, incarceration rates and percentages and all of that good stuff. And um, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do as New York Giants, you know. And the last question I asked him was personally, what should we do before we figure out a plan collectively? What should we what should we be doing personally to do something to Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter? I support all of that. At the end of the day, it's not about black people. It's not about white people. It's about people in general. It's about the United States of America, our country, and us not hating each other, us not doing evil acts towards each other. Stop flicking people off. Stop cursing people out. Hold the door for somebody. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's spread love, man. And that's that's what we get through. That's what you teach your kids. You know, you start teaching your kids hate and somebody say something to you, you hit them. You know what I mean? Like, that's not that's not a good way to be talking and thinking and putting that on to the other generation. And for me, everything I do, like, uh, community-wise, it's always with kids. I'm always in Jersey City, Newark, New Brunswick, places I feel like that need it. You know, and they hear my story. I'm from the hood. You know what I mean? I've grown from that, though. I'm still not hood and street anymore. You know, you get to a point where you mature, you 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 grow out of that. You know, and I'm trying to tell those kids, like, look, you can get to my point where you're at right now. You know, you just got to focus. You got to you gotta have your eyes on the prize, set goals, respect people, respect your parents, respect people around you, you know, and then work hard. You know, and, and that's my contribution to Black Lives Matter, talking to these kids, trying to get them the right mindset now. And it's, it's just so tough that when you... We talk about Jersey City. Yeah. You know, these same kids that go to school, they walking out, and their cousins and their brothers and their uncles Gang and their fathers, banging, they yeah, right there on the yeah. corner, yeah. right down the street from the school. Yeah. You know, they walk. I used to walk down New Brunswick, Remsen Avenue every day to go to the bus. Fiends out. That's fiends time. Mm-hmm. Seven o'clock in the morning when they the bus just is coming out. Home from getting they high. just out. They bopping. Fiends is bopping. Fiends already got a mean Diddy Bob at seven? <laughs> Moving. Pretty much. Time to get Scurrying thing. across the street real yeah, fast. <laughs> and you got to walk past that every day. Yeah. You know, as kids, man. And, and, you know, that's that's tough, man. Well, that's the, and, like that's, that, and that's one of the hard part about, like, uh, with police. With if, if police, the police that are not, the ones that are not doing a good job and the ones that are not treating children fairly. You have to think about the kids in the hood who have a situation in which they can't necessarily trust their own family because mm-hmm. there are people who are not well around them, and then they don't feel like they can trust the police. Well, God damn it, what are you supposed to do? Right. Well, then right. you factor in other, you know, me, start preaching about food and the food the mm-hmm. kids are eating and the fake food and the juicy juice and the processed sugars, and we sending kids off to school wondering why they have emotional problems, and we pumping them full of fake food. And these are also kids <laughs> whose parents are working late to try to make ends meet. They yeah. get out of school, they got nowhere to go, no after school program, no nothing. So you start adding up this street. list. Right. You start adding up this Someone list. Someone's a recipe for failure. It really is. Well, that's the hard part. They're set up. They're, they're, it's You have to, what you did, you you didn't do like the average thing. No. You did the you did the way above average. Stayed disciplined. Didn't get caught up in bullshit. Right. Avoided at all costs and worked your ass off. Right. We're talking about you didn't get this swole just being born. <laughs> you know you sat there and worked day in and day. Out. And I just think people don't realize a lot of times that to do what you did from where you're from is a more is a even more challenging act than to do it where I was from. You know, that's still, an, that, and the athletes I knew still worked really hard, right? right? But they had parents who had time right. and money. Right. They right. didn't have yeah. any worries. They right. didn't have to worry about how they'd get home when they stayed at the gym till 8 o'clock at night. They would right. just get in their car and drive home didn't to a nice They didn't have to worry neighbor. about getting robbed or dealing right. with crackheads or anything. You had a lot the, of extra the, stuff the to odds, think about. The odds is stacked up against us. You know, I say us as in, you know, black people from low-income areas, poverty-stricken areas. It's, it's all stacked up against us. That's why I feel like, People like myself, the platform I'm on, you got to get back in there. Yeah. You know, you got to dive back in there, man, and talk to the kids. Whatever you do, just do something positive. Be around them. Just speak to them. Talk to them. You know, give them a hug. You know, whatever. Let them see you doing good. Smile at them. You know what I mean? All that matters, you know? And I just, every time I end up talking to a group, I'm just hoping I can get a couple kids that they click in their head and, you know, they can maybe not follow my path, but at least... They're at this point where you can go this way or this way. That's right. You know, and this way, we all know what this way is. This way is not good. 
You know, and by and, the way, everyone is pushing them this way. So many people are so pushing them. So many. So they need someone to, to it just someone to right. try to push them the other way. Right. And, and and the kids I talk to, the high school kids, the kids in elementary school, that's around the age where you start leaning in a certain direction. You know, I got kids I went to high school with that, you know, are still in jail now, you know, from stuff they did back in the day. You know, and like I said, it was at that point where I went this way and they went that way. Talk about as a man, right? Like the, that crossroads, right? I'm sure you started playing football. How old were you? 14. 14. So freshman year? Yeah, freshman, freshman year. year. Um, talk about what it meant to have something where you you had a responsibility, right? Because I'm sure that kept you out of a lot of trouble. Yeah, it did. Where it was literally like, nah, I can't go out tonight. Right. I can't hang out over there because coach said, or I got to get up tomorrow because we got a game. And if I want to play on Friday or Saturday, whenever the game was, if I do X, Y, Z, I don't get to play. Right. When did it click for you? Were you always disciplined? Um, or was there a moment where you understood that there were greater things that you had planned and you couldn't take the risk? I, I was pretty much disciplined um, since, since a young a young age, I was the honor roll kid, um, you know, perfect attendance. You know, I was I was that kid. I, school was kind of easy to me. You know, it it just came to me. School is not that difficult if you actually pay attention. Right. You know, some kids they go to school just to be there. You know, just to get, uh, hey, I'm here, guys. You know, but if you actually pay attention, you can do all your homework and stuff like that. You know, so it's not really that that difficult. Um, you know, I just had it up to my mind, like, all right, I got to a certain point where I was like. I'm a pretty good athlete. I was playing basketball first. I was really good in basketball. And then I was like, I want to go to college. But I know we can't afford college. I know that. So my whole thing was like, got to get a scholarship. Got to do it. And I thought it was going to be through basketball. You know, then it ended up being, I broke my arm sophomore year, finished the football season. So I missed like the whole basketball season. And then I came in my junior year in my high school. I started balling in football. So then it ended up being football. But you, I had a goal. I had a purpose. You know, I wasn't just showing up to school to say hi to my friends. You know, I was actually trying to learn stuff. I took AP Calc my senior year. In was high it, but was that your mom? Was that your dad? I don't. I would, did, was your mom, dad there both pushing you? It was my mom mostly, but it was it was me. You know, and 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 that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. It's it's you. You take it upon yourself. You know, what age hopefully is younger than than later. You know, so you can actually grasp it. You know, and 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 finish high school and not get the GED. People be like, oh, I'm gonna get my GED. Cool, but what you do when you was in high school? You know what I mean? Like, it's cool and everything. Like to to finish. But like, at a certain age, you understand like, all right, look, I'm uh, my priorities is a certain way, you know. And some people realize that a little too late, and they put themselves in a bad situation. And I felt like I realized it at a good time. And I mean, I got brothers and sisters, you know, that came from the same household. That you know, one my older brother, you know, I love him to death, but you know, he's a he's an ex-con. You know, we got the same mother and father. We get the same household. So it's like I don't know. Is it the upbringing? And maybe that was the blessing, though. You know, the blessing was yeah. you saw. I, I learned. You saw the I fuck learned. up. So yeah. he was like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. no, yeah, no, I'm not gonna that. do that. Mm -hmm. wow. wow, Jonathan Casillas, man, come back anytime, bro. I appreciate you know it. What man. I'm saying, come hang out. Yeah, we, we need, fault. we need, you know, we nowadays we used to be able to get Victor Cruz on the phone like that. Look at these play. Now he just texts with Rosenberg. He never comes on the show. Well, because I mean, he feels like you know what? Let me give Rosenberg some shoes. And then <laughs> why are you really? He's very <laughs> jealous of my friendship with Victor. It's, and then so, it's some pregame, some pregame passes. He gets pregame passes, and, pre -game passes and then we games. never get an interview. It's called being anymore. a good friend. It's called being reliable. Am I? Am I? Friend. Remember, no, Victor used to come yeah, on all the yeah, time. Yeah. Why don't you? I when was the last time you asked him? What's up, Vic? You should come. Why we gotta ask him? You talk to him every day. So you want him on the show? Are you happy with Jonathan Casillas? I am. I'm just saying. This is my guy now. Jonathan Casillas, captain. I'm here. I'm here. So you're taking him over, Victor Cruz? That you're saying? Sorry, Vic. Captain of the <laughs> All right, no, don't give me nothing. Don't give me any nothing out here. <laughs> Yo, man, give it up, man. Jonathan Casillas, man. Appreciate it. Yo, good luck on the rest of the season, too, bro. Thank you much, man.